Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the middle of redoing the problems and we are on page number 286. Please turn to it, page number 286. The very first problem on page number 286 that we see there is problem number 121. Tell you what, I changed my mind here. Instead of doing number 121, I want to I want to do something that I've been going back and forth about. I think I want to do it after all. I want you to I want you to look at uh, on the previous page, page number 285. Turn to previous page and take a look at 119. Take a look at 119. Here is how the problem is set up. Problem number 119. We are given a semicircle. We have a triangle here. And of course we discussed this yesterday, and when I say yesterday, the yesterday means the previous video that we did with data sufficiency, and that will be day number four, 314. On day 314 we discussed this thing, that if you have a, if you have a circle, and if you draw a truck, if you, if you have a circle, and if you, go, if you draw a diameter, then it doesn't matter how you draw a triangle, all of these triangles that you see there, all of these triangles that you see there, they are all 90 degrees. So that triangle right there is 90 degrees. Then we come down straight and we are told that this distance is 2, let's call this thing x and y and this distance right here they are calling it a from here to here and this distance right here from here to here is b. This is how the problem is set up. Now here is what happened. We did actually solve the problem obviously but uh, I, I looked at it again and uh, there is a better way, there is a better, there is a more efficient way to actually solve this problem. We didn't do it the more efficient way the first time around, I want to redo it. So. Bear with me, let's redo the problem. You'll get something out of it. So here's what's going on. Before we do any work at all, before we do any work at all, there are three triangles that we're dealing with. The three triangles are P, Q, and R. P, Q, and R, that's what they call it. And let's call this, this point S. So we have three triangles. First triangle that we're going to look at is triangle P, Q, S triangle PQS. I want you to look at this triangle and I'm, I'm going to pick up speed here because we have already done it so there's no point wasting too much time. In this triangle X is our, uh, this is P to S is our hypotenuse so X squared equals 2 squared plus A squared, 2 squared plus A squared. Let's put this in one box. I want you to look at now the second triangle. The second triangle is the second small triangle which is SQR. In triangle SQR, similarly in SQR Q to R is the hypotenuse, Q to R would be the hypotenuse, so we have Y squared is equal to 2 squared plus B squared, 2 squared plus B squared. So that's our second second triangle, and now let's look at the third triangle. The third triangle is the main triangle, which is the PQR, PQR, and let's see what happens, okay? In the triangle PQR, this is a 90 degree angle, and therefore P to R is the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is P to R which is going to be A plus B. A plus B. So A plus B whole squared, the hypotenuse squared would have to equal X squared plus Y squared. X squared plus Y squared. Okay, just watch what happens. We already know what X squared is. X squared is right here which is 4 plus A squared. So X squared is 4 plus A squared. Similarly, we know what Y squared is. Y squared is 4 plus B squared. 4 plus b squared. And let's open this parenthesis a plus b whole squared which is going to be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, watch what, watch, watch what happens. We have a squared here, we have a squared here, we can get rid of it. Subtract a squared from both sides. We have a b squared here and we have a b squared here, we can get rid of that part. And what we are left with is 2ab, 2ab equals 4 plus 4 which is 8 which means ab equals 4. I do not know why I did not see this when we were doing it last time. We did it in a very roundabout way, very inefficient manner. So that's what we get out of the whole thing. And now we look at the two statements, you will see how much faster it goes. The first statement tells us, 
Okay, watch here. Here we go. We're going to start the work now. We're going to start the work now. Let's see what they tell us in the first statement. In the first statement, they tell us that uh, A equals 4. A equals 4. Well, simply knowing A equals 4, what can we do with it? We, we know this part. We already arrived at this thing that A times B is 4. Simply knowing that A equals 4 would then allow us to figure out the diameter, which is what the question is asking. What is the diameter P to R? The question is, what's the diameter? What's the diameter P to R? Which we know equals A plus B. So the question is, can we figure out the diameter sim by simply knowing that A equals 4? Well, answer is yes, because we know A times B is 4. If A times B is 4, A times B is 4, and A equals 4 we just found out, that implies that B must be 1. B must be 1. Well, if B is 1, then A is 4. A is 4 and B is 1. The diameter is 5. The first step in by itself is enough. The first step in by itself is quite sufficient. Where can we stick it? A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we have established the first step in by itself is enough, we know now that the answer cannot be B, C, or E. It has to be either A or D. Let's look at second statement. In the second statement, they tell us, in the second statement, that they go on to tell us that B equals 1. Well, the same exact story. If B is equal to 1, and we already know that A times B is 4. A times B is 4, therefore A times 1 is 4, therefore A is equal to 4. If A is equal to 4 and B is equal to 1, we can figure out the diameter. Therefore, second statement by itself does the job quite nicely as well. The mistake that, uh, that I made last time when we did the problem is that I did not do all of this problem, all of this work ahead of time. We did not analyze what is being told properly, and therefore we had to do all of this analysis in the context of the two statements. Because of, because of the fact that we had not analyzed properly what it is that is being asked here, what, is being, what it is that is being told here, we had to do all of that analysis in the context of each of these two statements separately, and there we, therefore we ended up doing more work. Here, analysis is already done. We know A times B is 4. If we know A, we can figure out B, and if we know B, we can figure out the A. The answer is D. The answer is D. I feel much better now. Let's go to the next problem now, which is the next page. Problem number 121. Just give me one more second. So we are on page number 286 now. Uh, number 121. The very first problem on the page. Let's see what it has to say. The very first problem on the page says that uh, we have a trade show and we are, we are told that the least number of people that were registered for the trade show, we are told that the least, least number of people registered on any given day was 80. That was the least, that was the least popular day. Apparently it's a six day trade show. There's a trade show going on and the least popular day in our trade show was, was the day on which only 80% only 80 people showed up. That's what they're telling us. The question is this. Question is what what is the average? What's the average of the six days? Or rather, the question is not what's the average, the question is question is was the average of the six days greater than 90? Was the average of the six days greater than 90? The trade show is going to be held for six days. The least popular day had 80 people uh, show up. The question is, was the overall average more than 90? Let's see what they tell us in the first statement, shall we? Again, before we look at the first statement, before we look at the first statement, it is a good idea, it is always a good idea to do some analysis, make sure what is what is being told and what is being asked here. So that's what we're going to do here. First we have to make up our six days. So here we go. We have our six days. So A plus B plus C plus D plus E. A plus B plus C plus D plus E. Those, those, are, those are five days. Those are five days. So A is our second day. B is our third day and so on and so forth. Our first day, they are arranged numerically. They are arranged in the ascending order. They are arranged in the increasing order. E is the most popular day. That's where the most people showed up. You understand? Stay with me in the story. It's very important. 
the least popular day, we are told only 80 people showed up. So it goes here. And we are told that the average, uh, what's the average more than 90? What's the average more than 90? The average of these numbers, these numbers, there are six of them here, divided by six. Question is, is this more than 90? Is the average, this quantity divided by six, is that more than 90? That's the question. Which is same as asking, which is same as asking, is the sum of these, is the sum of these more than 90 times, 90 times 6? Which is 554, which in turn, which in turn is same as asking, if you were to eight, subtract 80 from these, both of both sides here, this 80 is going to drop out, and this is same as asking A plus B plus C plus D plus E, is the sum of these five days greater than, uh, 540 minus 100 would have been 440, so it's going to be 460. So that's what this boils down to. This is what this boils down to. Let's put this thing on the side so that we have the room to work now. That's what, so what this question is asking is this thing, or we can stick it in here. So the question is A plus B plus C plus D plus E, is there some more than 460? That's, that's what this boils down to. Okay, let's look at the first statement and see what they tell us. Now we are ready to do our work. In the first statement they tell us, in the first statement they tell us that the average of the average of the four most popular days, the average of the four most popular days was 100. Well, the four most popular are, remember, they are arranged in order. They are arranged in numerical order. So here is our day number three, this is our day number four, day number five, and day number six. And these are the four most popular. So, so, so the four most popular day, I'm going to change the color here so that we can see it properly. The four most popular days that they're talking about are, this is the most popular, then the next most popular, then the next most, and this one. B plus C plus D plus E, this is what they're talking about. The average of these four days, B plus C plus D, we are told is 100, which is same as saying that B plus C plus D plus E divided by 4 is 100, is 100. Which of course, which of course is same as saying that the sum of these four days, which, which of course is same as saying the sum of these four days is 400. Are you with me? Let's see if we can answer that question. All, all we have to be able to answer is that is the sum of these five days more than 460? We know that B plus C plus D plus E, we just found out is 400. So now the question is, we know the question is, the question is A plus B plus C plus D plus E, is it more than 460? That's the question. But we already know that B plus C plus D plus E is 400, so we can replace it here. Can we answer this question? Can we answer this question? Is A plus 400 more than 460? Is A plus 400 more than 460? Which, in, which of course in turn is same as asking if you want to subtract 400 from both sides. If you subtract 400 from both sides, the question is, is A more than 60? To which you will say, bloody hell, of course it is. Of course it is. Because they tell us that the least popular day the least popular day had 80 people showed up. On the least popular day, we had 80 people. A is the second least popular day. The least popular day was 80. We don't know what A is, but A has got to be at least 81. Of course, A is more than 60. Of course, A is more than 60, because A, we are told, is the second, the way we arrange our work here, is the second least popular day. The least popular day had 80. Therefore, A, by definition, would have to be more than 60. As a matter of fact, it is more than 80. The first statement by itself is quite sufficient. The first statement by itself is quite sufficient. A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we have established that the first statement by itself is enough, we know now that the answer cannot be B, C, or E. It would have to be either A or D. Let's look at the second statement. Let's look at the second statement. I'm going to raise everything here except what, what we have to answer. We have to be able to answer this question. Is the sum of these five quantity more than 460? That's all it boils down to. So I'm going to raise everything else. Of course we have to raise everything else because everything else belongs to first statement. Let's look at second statement. 
in the second step, they tell us that the in the second step, they tell us the average, the average of the three three least. This is the least popular days is 85. Again, the way we set it, uh, the way we set our our, our work up is going to be like this. It's going to be 80 plus A plus B plus C plus D plus E. The question is, is this more than 90 times 6? The least, three, three least popular that they're talking about now, the three, the three least popular that they're talking about now is, this is the least popular day, 80 was the least popular, we, we are told that in the problem, the least popular day, the least number is 80. Then we have the second least popular day and the third least popular day. And their average, 80 plus A plus B, the average of these three numbers, average of these three days, we are told equals 85. Which is same as saying, which is same as saying that 80, 80, 80 plus A plus B divided by 3 has to equal 85. Which of course, which in turn of course is same as saying that 80 plus A plus B has to equal 85 times 3. Which in turn is same as saying that 80 plus A plus B is same as 85 times 3. We know 80 times 3. 80 times 3 is 240. 8 threes are 24. So 80 times 3 is 240. 240 and a 5 threes would be 240, 255. I hope I did not make a mistake because I, I, I get paranoid when I get too cocky. 255. So that's the sum of these three quantities. 80 plus, 80 plus A plus B has to be 255. Let's substitute in here. Let's substitute in here. In place of 80 plus 80 plus A plus B, we're going to substitute 255. So we get 255. Let's put this. I'm not going to raise it. So we get so this quantity right here, 255, which is right here. This quantity plus C plus D plus E is more than 540. That's the question. We can subtract. As a matter of fact, I'm going to raise this part so that we have more room. I don't know if you can see that low. Let's subtract 255 from both sides. And it drops out and C plus D plus E. The question is, is this is the, is the sum of these three is these three quantities, C plus D plus E, is the sum of these three more than 540 minus 255? Let's see what that is. So we get a 5 here. Uh, I, I'm not gonna make, I don't want to make a mistake. 13 minus 5 is 8 and 4 minus 2 is 2. So the question that we have to answer now, this is the bottom line, this is the bottom line we have to answer. Is the sum of these three days, C plus D plus E, more than 285? Let's find out. Let's see, let's see if we can answer that question. I need the room. Uh, let's do it on the top. Let's continue this thing. question that we have to answer is, is C plus D plus E more than 285. But we know, okay, keep listening. We know that the that the average of average of the three least popular days is 85. The average of the three least popular days is 85, which means to, to keep our world simple, of course there are infinite possibilities for the average to be 85. Well not infinite, but you get the idea. I just realized as, as soon as I said it, I realized there are there aren't infinite possibilities because these have to be integers. These are people. It's very difficult to have 2.1 person. Do you understand? So there aren't infinite possibility, but there are wide number of possibilities where 80 plus A plus B would equal uh, would, would 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 have an average of 85. We'll keep our worlds very simple. We'll keep it very simple. Very simple world would be 80 80 plus 85 plus 90. Because they are evenly spaced, because these three numbers are evenly spaced. 80, 85, and 90, of course their average is going to be 85, which is what we are told here. But what does that tell us? That tells us, that tells us that it is quite possible, it is quite possible for C to be 91, D to be 92, E to be 93. That is possible, that is not beyond, that is not beyond the realm of possibilities. That is not beyond the realm of possibilities. It is quite possible because the least three, the average of the least three, average of the three least popular days we are told is 85. 
therefore to, for the sake of simplicity we just assume that they were 80, 85 and 90. Well once we get to 90, the others are simply have to be more than 90. So that's one possibility. In which case, 91 plus 90 plus 93, 90 times 3 is 270, 270 plus 6 is 276, 276 is not greater than 285. So that was the question we were asking. Is this true? Well, if this is the case, the answer is no. But of course, another possibility is that the C might be 100, D might be 200, and E might be 300, or E might be 3 million. You get the idea. In this scenario, it is greater than 285. So if that's the case, the answer is no. If this is the case, the answer is yes. The bottom line is, second statement is not enough. Second statement is the data that is provided in the second statement is not sufficient. Therefore, the answer is A. Therefore, the answer is A. Now listen, I do, I do understand, I do realize that I go, I go on rambling forever and ever and uh, I'm getting paranoid now, maybe the video is already too long. Should we do one more? Let's do one more, what the hell, let's do one more. It's the next one is a geometry question, very straightforward question. Let's, let's get it out of the way, shall we? Just give me one, one second here for, for my break. Like I said, next one is a very straightforward geometry question. So we're given a circle here. We're given a circle here. Here is the diameter from here to here. And we have, we are told that B is the center of the small circle. B is the center of the small one. So we have a small circle here. And B is the center of the small one. So far so good. We also told that C is the center of the large one. So here's a large circle. This is, let's pretend I did not draw it properly, did I? It did not come out very nice. And I don't like it. I bloody well do not like it because let me start again let's first look at the center of the large circle which is C right here and B has to be the center of the small circle let's put the small circle right here voila that's much better so we have a B here we have an A here we have a C there what the hell it's the other way around is my problem the way actually I had drawn all I had to do is make it make the make the make the circle larger make the circle larger oh god I'm gonna erase everything I can't do it if I'm too concerned about leaving everything on the blackboard I get distracted here we go we are told that B is the center of the small circle. B is the center of the small one. C, we are told, is the center of the large one. So here's our large circle. Draw the di diameter. C is the center of the large one. So far, so good. The way the small circle is drawn is this way, right here. Okay. I know it looks pretty banged up, but you get the idea. You get the idea. Listen, this is the best I can do, okay? This is the best I can do. B is the center of the small one, right here is the center for the small circle. Here is our A, here is our B, here is our C, here is our D, and here is our E. The, the question is, let's see how, what is the question asking here? Let me read the question here. It says, Let me read the whole thing. In the picture above, A, B, C, D lie on the line in both, A is on both A and B. B is the center of the small circle, C is the center of the large circle on the same, D is on the same small circle. Yes, we have that. And E is on the large circle. What's the area of the region? Okay, very good. Here's the punchline. What's the area of the region that is inside the large circle but outside the small circle? What's the area of the region that lies inside the large circle 
Obviously, it has to lie inside the large circle, but outside the small circle. What they're looking for is what we typically hear the hear of in, in the geometry question as the shaded region. I'm going to draw a shaded region right here. Let's draw it right here. It's a very straightforward, as I said, very simple geometry question. Uh, all we have to figure out is the radius of the small circle, the radius of the large circle. Because if we have the radius of the small circle, we can figure out the area of the small circle. If we have the radius of the large circle, we can figure out the area of the large circle. Once we have their areas, we subtract one from the other, and that's it. So let's see what they tell us. Let's see what they tell us. In the first statement, they tell us that AB equals 3. AB equals 3. A to B is 3. There you go. If AB is 3, that means area of the small circle. Area of the small circle. Area of the small circle, which is A to B is the radius of the small circle, which is pi r squared. Pi r squared, which is 9 pi. So far, so good. And they also tell us that BC, BC is 2, BC is 2, B, oh there you go, B to C is 2, if B to C is 2 and A to B is 3, then the A to C, that together, this and that implies that A to C is A to B plus B to C, which is 3 plus 2, which is 5, which is the radius of the large circle, which is the radius of the large circle. If the radius of the large circle is 5, then the area of the large circle is going to be pi r squared, which is going to be 25 pi. As I said, there is nothing to it. It's a very straightforward geometry question. Now we know the area of the large circle. We know the area of the small circle. We subtract the two, and that's our shaded region. The first statement does the job quite nicely. A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we established that the first statement by itself is enough, we know now that the answers, answer cannot be answer cannot be B, C, or E. It would have to be either A or D. If it turns out that the second statement by itself is also sufficient, then the answer would be D in that case. Otherwise, we'll stick with A. Let's look at the second statement. That's it. We're done with the first statement. Let's look at the second statement. Now, when we look at the second statement, of course, we have to erase all of this thing. We, don't, we do not have this information. We have to start from scratch. In the second statement, C to D, they tell us, C to D, we're told, is 1. C to D is 1. Okay, keep listening. And D to E, we are told, is 4. D to D is 4. But C to E, because C is the center, you see, C, C is the center of the large circle, and therefore C, C to E is the radius of the large circle, which is simply C to D, C to D plus D to E. C to D, we are told, is 1. D to E we are told is 4, therefore the area, area radius of the large circle is 5, just like before. As I always point out to you, they never contradict the information. Whatever you information you get gathered from the first statement, the second statement will never contradict it. If after doing all the work in the first statement you found out that the radius of the large circle was 5, and then when you get to second statement and you do all your work and you find out that, this, that the radius of the large circle turns out to be something other than 5, then something has gone wrong. Something has gone wrong. You have made a mistake either in your work in the first statement or the work that you did in the second statement or there is of course the third possibility which is that the work that you did in both of those statements was wrong. But they never contradict each other. Do you understand? We know from, the, from our work, from the, even though we're not supposed to remember it, we know that the radius of the large circle was 5 which is exactly what we find here. Anyway, so therefore the area of the large circle is 25 pi. Let's see if there is some way we can figure out the area of the small circle because that's the key. That in order for us to figure out the shaded region, we need to figure out the radius of the small circle. Let's see what we can do here. We know that C to D is 1. C to D is 1. And C to E is 5. C to E is 5. Let's see. C to E we know, C to E we know is the radius of the large circle. Is the radius of the large circle. We just established this thing, which of course is same as C to D plus D to E. We just talked about it, which is 5. But, but, this, but this radius that we're talking about of the large circle, radius that we're talking about large circle from C to E, because C is the center of the large circle, Whatever the distance is from C to E, which is the radius of the large circle, that distance would have to be same as A to C, because that's the center of the circle. Therefore, this is same as A to C. Okay. A to C. Well, there we go. We're almost done. If A to C is, we just found out that A to C is 5. We just found out that A to C, A 
to C is 5. If A to C is 5, and we know that we are told that uh, C to D is 1, C to D is 1, we are almost there. And we are told that C to D is 1, and A, A to C is 5, which means that uh, the diameter, diameter of this small one is 6. Well, if the diameter of the small one is 6 because it's 5 plus 1, that's the diameter from A to D. A to D represents the diameter of the small one. This is the A to D, which is the diameter of the, of the small circle, A to D, which is 5 plus 1, which is 6. If the diameter of the small circle is 6, then that implies that the radius of the small circle is 3, just like before. Since the radius of the small circle is 3, therefore, the area of the small circle is going to be 9 pi, and therefore, the shear division that they're looking for is... 25 pi that we found out the area of the large circle minus the area of the small circle, same as before. Turns out that the second statement also does the job quite beautifully. Although it wasn't quite as straightforward to see it for, uh, 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 right away, but it is, it is there. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I'm not gonna, my, my intention was to actually finish this column. There are two more in this column, but I'm not going gonna, gonna, gonna to continue here. There is a limit to how much one can brook of one's babbling. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.